First of all, thank you very much to everybody who's here for being here and uh, to Aastha Foundation primarily because I think without Aastha I would not be what I am today. Um, as I'm always told by my elders and from those who have, I've learned from that, yeah, it is not the only one that's responsible for what I have now become. Um, that yes, there have been many, many things that have contributed to my life space and my journey. But I do know, because I have seen different, I have seen different worlds, I have seen what has happened to people without a space like Asta. And I know what became of them. And uh, therefore, it is with deep gratitude that I acknowledge the presence of Asta Foundation and all those who are part of it and who keep it alive and kicking um, from the bottom of my heart, deep gratitude. I, apart from what family made possible and what um, life in general made possible. So I began as an actor when I was 15 years old and in the days when I could not do theater, when I had to reinvent myself, I was, uh, I had the good fortune of being approached by Akshay Patra. Um, and deep gratitude to Akshay Patra too for trusting me at that point of time when I was reinventing myself. Um, when my children were not with me anymore, I had lost them in a battle in court. And um, I took up the assignment because it was to be with government school children. And it was the only way I could make sense of anything that was happening in my life at that point of time. To get on with it, Akshay Patra came to us and said they were going to do this intervention with government schools called Theatre for a Cause. And I represent Antarya Film and Theatre House, the non-profit wing of which is called Sarsai Foundation for Theatre and Education. We made the ground rules very ground rules very clear. We said we are not going to do a Lion King or a Goldilocks or whatever. Yeah, but we would do something more rooted. We would do a folk tale. That was something I was delving into at that point of time, and it continues to be an area of great interest for me. So the Indian folk tale was what we decided to do, and. At that point of time, if I'm to look at the overview of this whole thing, um, we were looking at children from a socio-economic background, which meant that there were challenges that they would be facing, which we probably in our lives would not be in touch with. And I was particularly sensitive to that. I said, you know, it's not going to be like any other uh, experience we've had before. It was not going to be a one week thing. It was not going to be production oriented. It was not going to be even a one month endeavor. It was going to be an exercise that would last at least three months. So we started and this was a time when uh, Process work had not been heard of uh, so much in government schools at least. They were not yet so open to it. Uh, and uh, But we managed to actually get our toehold in there. Because um, when we went to them, and Akshay Patra did all the negotiating, they bought into the idea that it would be process oriented. Yes, we were going to create a play at the end of it. But that having been said, they refused to give us more than one period to work with the children. Uh, and that too in the afternoon, when the children want to really just get home, you know. And we said, uh, no, this is not going to work. So we said, well, let's work with the children after school hours. And the parents wouldn't agree. And so we had hit a roadblock. But then the children, they were who we got in touch with and we said, do you want this? Is this something we need? Again, this was from process work, whose need is it? And we said, do you want this 
Do you not want this? And they said, no, 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 we definitely want this. Now, these were children who were auditioned, I came to know later, from uh, five schools uh, in the South Bangalore area. We decided to re uh, rehearse at the Putanhari School in Bangalore, uh, in the JP Nagar area. And the children decided that they would get permission to rehearse from six in the morning. It meant uh, that they, we would have to motivate a whole set of drivers to pick up these children from their homes and bring them so that they could attend rehearsals. And um, we didn't begin rehearsals because we concentrated on the process uh, for the first several weeks, almost two months out of the three months. So the rehearsal process was very short, but we concentrated more on the process of it. I'd like us to uh, look at the first clip. Where? Where do you, where do you go off? E V F E F E R Y E R Y Every 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 time I turn turn my If that Madam G sees this Is Madam G see this If If that Madam G If Behave yourself Behave yourself. Hmm. Nimge gaya ata. Nimge gaya ata. Did you get hurt? Give that hurt. Did you get hurt? Did. Nap kai thore. Right? Is it Marana? Ah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Then she shot on the plane. So that would give you an idea of where we began. The children could neither read, they couldn't write, which I asked him, Bariyak Bharata, he says no. And uh, as far as memory goes, we were dealing with children who are malnourished, which is why Akshay Patra steps in with their midday meals. And uh, we don't realize it, but it's, it's just so rampant, you know, this, the disadvantages of, uh, that come with poverty, uh, that come with resourcelessness. And I'm not talking of resourcelessness of the of material resources, but really resourcelessness of the spirit sometimes. And I think it is through process work th that we tried to build that. When we began, one of the things we realized was that children um, either had um, a, an alcoholic parent very often, um, either both parents were al alcoholic sometimes, that was also there, or at least one parent was definitely alcoholic. Um, and uh, violence was present uh, in the home. And so when we started off, we said, okay, we didn't personally, I didn't want to audition any child. And I said, whoever is willing will be in the play. But of course, because they were choosing from across five schools, I guess they did audition. And the day we began rehearsals, I had a bunch of kids coming and running to me and saying, why are we not in the play? And I looked at the teacher and uh, she said, well, you know, they'll only be a nuisance. And I said, no, but they're willing. So thankfully they agreed and those kids also got in. So we had now had 25 children on our rolls, but only when, uh, when we began, we had only 15 in attendance. So now that was something we realized we were going to have to cope with. There was absenteeism also. And, but nevertheless, we started off and we found that there were children. Now we picked this particular folk tale because we wanted to give parents an orientation towards um, the kind of education that they wanted to provide for their children. Because having English is a big thing in, for 
uh, have not, as they looked at themselves. So English is something that they, the parents aspired to, and they wanted the play to be in English. And we said, we are going to have it in English only up to that point where it is comfortable for the children. We're not going to let it become a pressure for the children, ideally. Uh, and so we devised the script in such a way that it would work out for the children. Well, it was the story of a donkey uh, and how the donkey is taken to a school and uh, the Malvi is asked to make a man of this ass. Uh, and I will play that clip for you at the end of the talk. Um, but before that, I'd like to tell you about how, and we did this particular process, we worked, because the first time we did it in 2011, it was a huge success, and uh, we were asked by Akshay Patra to do it again in 2014 with a school in Kormangla. So these are the two schools that I'll be talking about. Uh, when we began, there was nobody who wanted to do the role of the donkey, <laughs> except one child. Um, I have changed the names of the children. Um, and uh, so Sunil um, said he wanted to play the role of the donkey. And I said, you know, nobody wants this role and you're the only one who wants it. How come? I mean, the donkey is the hero. So I'm very happy you've taken it up and we clapped for him and all of that we did. But I asked him, how come? And he said, you know what? Everyone at home calls me that. I'm called Katte. Katte is the word for donkey in Canada, And he said, I'm called Katte, so maybe uh, I'll be good at this at least. And uh, that's how we began with uh, us dealing with, uh, you know, looking at how even a nickname, the power it wields over us. So what, what does it mean to us? How does it define ourself? And what is it we can do to redefine ourselves? So we looked at exercises that we could tailor to this kind of need. And w one of those uh, exercises was about uttering one's own name, saying one's own name, and then declaring one's name. And uh, it turned out to be quite a powerful exercise, though it seems very simple. But a child is not used to uttering his or her own name. Uh, none of us, I mean, how, how often do we call our own name? But uh, we did that. We would first whisper our names. We would hold hands and do that. And then we would say our name together. And the strength in numbers is something that the children tuned into. Mostly in, um, I find, private schools, children are not ready to utter anything very loudly, very easily. But in the government schools, somehow, we didn't have that problem. But uttering one's name, they found it funny. That worked for us. And they were able to look at actually intertwining that with bhava, with emotion, and uh, using the utterance of their own name coupled with different moods. So that was something we did. And we looked at why uh, some children in the government school setting also were not able to uh, say their name loudly. Even despite the strength in numbers, despite holding hands, despite feeling like they were held. Um, and we decided to look at that closely. And we said, what's, what's stopping us? And uh, they said, you know, it might be wrong. Maybe um, it's not something we should be doing. Um, so then we looked, we discussed things about right and wrong, and um, that also came up. A lot of times, there were a lot of th other things that would come up in the course of the exercises that we were um, considering. And one of the things that we realized with um, the idea of right and wrong, because in art there is no right and wrong, and we had to expose them to that um, while holding the boundaries, while making them aware of boundaries. So the discussion led to them actually articulating uh, their idea of right and wrong, saying that harming another is wrong, Harming oneself is also wrong. Now we have to realize that these are kids who are actually saying that, you know. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, harming oneself is also wrong. We can make mistakes. We can change. So we always look through our exercises for ways of uh, how we can make a hopeless situation a hopeful one. Uh, we also looked at how they felt we cannot take back the hurt caused, but it can become lesser when we change. There is a time and place for everything. Now these are learnings articulated by children through, the, through their process of sharing. Um, uh, we also looked at authority. We said, we said, you know, if I can say the name loudly, why won't you allow yourself to when we have the uh, freedom, the time and space to do so? And they looked, we looked at authority because they said, you can, you can get away with it, we can't. And then we actually made them aware of the fact that they had negotiated for their time and space. They had spoken to their principal, they had spoken to their parents, and they had got the time, and they were coming for rehearsals at six, six in the morning, which is when they kind of came in touch with their own ability. And uh, thereafter, of course, we had voices you know, going across from the classroom where we were rehearsing across the play field into the principal's office and they were unstoppable. But that was a happy situation to be in. There were other turning points for us. There, were, uh, there was a boy called Chaitanya, the little boy who was trying to come into the frame. His name has changed. I'm not taking his name, but you've seen him. And he used to love to do cartwheels and we said, okay, you know, too much of something, even if it's very good, is not going to work for anybody. And he understood that. And also working with feedback from the group, that worked for us. How we looked at sharing vulnerability, how we looked at uh, asking for help, tapping into and counting on another's compassion with it, without inflicting oneself with indignity, which was something that was happening very easily with these children. Uh, children who were motherless. Uh, now we have to realize that there were all kinds of events that would take place in their lives, which were very real. This is not fiction. Uh, they could come up saying there's been an accident, that they were hit, someone else got hit, or someone fell so ill, someone died. All of this happened through our um, process of producing the play. And when such things happened, we, had, we looked at what were the affirmations we could give ourselves. And um, I mean, because what do you tell a child who's lost his mother? What do you tell a child who's going to be in the care of a foster parent? I could promise no bed of roses. I could not promise any child who was being hit by a parent any bed of roses. And I had to say, uh, let's look at what we can work with. Let's look at reality, the way it is. Let's look at our limitations and then look at what we can work with from there. And some of the things we came up with was, I can do it, I can make a difference, I am hardworking, I can manage. It's only this time that is tough, it isn't so only for now, not forever. I can wait, I will work towards changing it, I will persevere, I have other blessings. But this was not sufficient because what happens when that skirt with the opened hem out, the opened out hem, you know, is uh, also grows too short because the child has been told, okay, you're resourceful, your shirt, shirt is, uh, you know, too short now, your skirt is too short, open the hem, you can get resourceful, you're looking at your strengths and all that. But what happens when reality strikes again? And that was the tough part because how do you ask for help? How do you actually allow yourself? And when they went through that process of being able to ask for help, um, we had children holding hands, putting a hand on the other's shoulder, saying, I know how that feels. You have to be brave. I hope there will be someone who will take care of you. This is about a child who had lost a parent. I will always be your friend. Simple words. When you feel sad, you come to my house. Here's a safety pin. Pin up that shirt of yours. There goes the bell. Come, let's go eat. Quite contrary to the usual pattern, we did not find Sunil eating alone thereafter through the duration of the creation of the play. 
Then we come to 2014, Koramangala, violence in the house, a girl called Kanta, slightly obese. She would thrash anyone who made fun of her. And silently, I really felt good for her, but I had to you know, draw the boundaries and say, no, 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 no. You know, you're not going to bash up each other over things. So uh, we did that, and we got there. And um, yeah, Kanta learned, learned to get her way diplomatically with the boys and with the girls. And uh, they stopped teasing her. They stopped the body shaming eventually. And um, so we also worked with um, kids from the slums in Chennai. And uh, one of the things we did was looking at qualities that one feels one does not have. So we actually threw cards with different qualities on the ground. And we said, go pick one which you feel you don't have. And the irony of it, we had both positive attributes and negative ones. So you had things like mischievous and stubborn and all, among the good and helpful ones and all. And uh, at the end of it, they felt that they had those which they thought they didn't have. Uh, we had common challenges which were uh, you know, stiffness of the body, wanting to turn their back to the audience and all of that. And Back. But I heard he's happy. 
the song. Every clip and um, please replace every word wherever the children say Pintiaka, hear process work. Okay? Continue. And it was not about really um, teaching them, but it was really about just putting them in touch with that richness which is within. And that's what we've tried to do with this play, hand in hand with Akshay Patra, which made it possible. <laughs> Thank you.